and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon, and today I am talking with the one and only Samantha Melhorn. She is the founder of Marketing Minimalist, and she's just an all-around great person to know and to have on your team. So, uh, Samantha, thanks for uh, being on my podcast. Thanks for inviting me. I'm super excited to be here and share a little bit with your, your gang here. Well, you are quite welcome. So uh, a little bit of background. Um, I met Samantha a few months ago at an event that she was speaking at. My son Caleb and I were there. And as we sat in the audience and we listened to her share, uh, we were mesmerized. Uh, to say the least, we were captivated and intrigued, right? So after she came off stage, we pursued her and uh, we talked with her and had a great conversation. And we wanted to, I wanted to share with my audience, Samantha, um, not your presentation, but but who you are and, and what you do, because it's so different than what I've heard so many other marketing you know, experts talk about. And especially when they talk about, well, I'm a social media expert or an online expert. It just, after a while, they all start sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? It's, it's just all the same. You have a very different, very unique methodology of perspective. And so I want, I want my audience to hear that. So, be, but before we get there, unpack for us a little bit about, you know, who you are and how did you ever get to doing what you do? Yeah. Um, so I actually, one of the, one of the, people, Kim Walsh Phillips, she, she did a presentation back when I was in college and um, she hired me like almost on the spot, like before I had even graduated, we had had a conversation. She brought me onto the team. I did that for a few years and I realized coming from a family of a bunch of like service-based um, small business owners that that was like what I really wanted to focus on. So about two years ago at this point, um, I decided to take what I had learned from Kim and um, all of those years running ads and learning about digital media and figure out the best way to kind of package that and use it for small business owners, service-based business owners, um, CEOs who kind of just want to be like the standout and get their thoughts and their, you know, um, their information out to the world. So that's, that's that's what I do. I specialize primarily right now in, uh, it's, it's going to sound like a strange combination, but it'll make sense later, I promise, LinkedIn and Google My Business, uh, because as you'll find out, those two things really go hand in hand. So um, I just, yeah, I started Marketing Minimalist for simple strategies that get big results for small business owners. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, and, and it was that, that combination you just mentioned, as Caleb and I were sitting there, uh, she, she did a masterful job because in her presentation, she's going through all these things that, you know, a business owner needs to do. And Caleb and I are, I mean, Caleb's, well, you've met Caleb, Samantha. He's, he's like wicked smart. The dude can do anything. So we're sitting here looking at your list of things to do with LinkedIn. And I look at Caleb, I'm like, yeah, you could do that. You could do that, Caleb. You could do that, Caleb. And then you hit Google My Business. I'm like, he could probably figure that out. And then at the end of the presentation, we looked at each other and said, that's stupid. Let's hire her. And it, it just, it's, it made so much sense, Samantha, but unpack for us the, the few things of how LinkedIn and Google My Business, which we, I really don't hear too much about the importance of that for, for local business owners. Um, help us understand why those two are so important and, and what we can do to, to kind of up our game there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the reason that LinkedIn and Google My Business go together so well is because you're likely um, a keystone in your business. You're likely the or the founder, the you know, at the top of the tree. So if people are going to look up you and what you do, they're going to look up one of two things, your name or the name of your business. Um, and when they do that, they the first place people go, the most popular search engine is always going to be Google. So they go in there, they they type your name in. And the interesting thing that most people don't know is if you search your name on Google, just your first and last name, almost always, unless there's a celebrity out there with sharing your name, almost always the first result or the top three results is going to be your LinkedIn profile. So it is absolutely critical that that thing looks like a sales letter um, for you and your business. And uh, most people miss that. So the second part of that is Google My Business. People are going to search your business name, and you're, if you don't have great SEO, 
your business website might not be the first thing that pops up, but what will pop up is your Google My Business, which is like your business's business card. Um, so if you don't have that filled out, you're losing a ton of opportunities every time somebody looks you up or what you do up in your area. And, and, and the Google My Business, just because, you know, because it's not my sweet spot, right? That's the thing that kind of sits on the right hand side that says, hey, I'm open. Here's my website. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Most people will claim this and never fill it out. So it pops up and there's all like Google is trying to give people who are searching for things the best opportunity to find the right match. So it's if you're not taking advantage of this, like you're, you're literally missing out on an opportunity for Google to hand you leads. There's there's links on there for appointments. Um, your website obviously can be on there. You can actually set it up so that people can message you or call your phone directly from the Google My Business. Uh, and just small tweaks on this, I've seen have, have huge results. Um, just Yeah, because people are, those people are actively searching and, and really they're, they're searching for you because they're typing in your business or something. And if they have an opportunity to, I mean, I, I, after you explained to me what that was, I realized I use that a lot, right? Locally, and, I, and I'm going to the website or I'm searching menus or I'm looking at calendars. And to, but to be able to say, hey, book a time on my calendar or do that to, to a hot prospect, somebody who's searching you out, isn't that who we always want in business? And we'll spend thousands of dollars to get them and what you're saying is if you just fill out that that Google My Business, which I think is like free. Yep. You know, if, if you just spend some time filling it out, making sure it's done right, you might actually attract a client or two who's searching for you. Right. I mean, right? Yeah, that's actually that's absolutely it. People will pay thousands of dollars to push a rock uphill and convince a cold lead to buy. When Google My Business, like people are already there looking for you. They've already said, Hey, I know I have this problem. I want the solution. Who's who can provide it for me? And that's your opportunity to show your credibility by having, you know, reviews on there, the right links, because think about it. We search for things on Google all of the time and we do a mental evaluation of the results that pop up. So we choose the people who look like we can trust them, the people that have the stars, the people that have the reviews, the people who have the photos and it's filled out. If you have like you know, a doctor on there and he doesn't have any stars or reviews, you're going to be like, oh, you know, yeah. so same thing is for every person who's listening here today. Well, and it's really interesting because I was in, um, I was in another city recently and I, I was lunchtime. I needed a place to eat. Right. So I Googled because I was, I didn't know where I was going. So I'm like, okay, what's around me. I found a restaurant. I, I found all of that. And um, it, came up unfortunately permanently closed okay but then i was able to go to the next one down who had all their google stuff filled out that was close to me and i got there from them i didn't right i was hungry i was looking for a restaurant because they had some of that information filled out they gained a, a customer and that's really what you're talking about whether you're a restaurant whether you're a financial advisor it doesn't matter. People want to know that you have a, a, a physical location of some nature. It can be your house because a lot of us work from our home these days. That doesn't matter, right? Right. And there's so many, it's like claiming it is not enough. Because like I said earlier, Google wants to make the best match for you. So when you searched restaurants near me, it, it looked at proximity, like what is close to you? Um, and then it also looked at the hours. Are they open right now? So if you don't get on there and set those things up, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Like Google wants to match you, but you're not giving it the criteria it needs to do it. So yeah, very I'm cool. up here because I'm getting excited. Yeah, no, that's good because I'm working with exciting people. So, all right. So let's, talk, let's talk some um, practical things. How could a business owner listen to this? What, what would be like a first thing they would do? How do they even know if they've claimed their Google my business? What? Yeah. So um, the easiest way to find out is actually just like search your business and see what pops up and kind of do like an audit, like a secret shopper audit of okay. how you're showing up to your people online. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's really, it's Google they make it so easy for you. They want everything to be like step-by-step step because they want business owners to do this. Um, so I think it's business.google.com or google.business.com. And that link actually will just like walk you through 
Hmm. setting up, claiming it. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a setup process. So you have to do like the mail, the postcard because they want to verify that you're an actual, you know, real deal. Um, but once you get past that, there's like an info page and you can just like kind of go step by step, fill it in, uh, make sure you fill in all of the areas. There are, are some few tips and tricks that you can maximize this, but um, a lot of the information that you need is pretty straightforward. So yeah. that would be step one is claim it and fill in the info. So, so how about this? We'll, we'll make step one, go ahead and just Google your business. <laughs> go, to Google and Google your business name and see what pops up over there and then claim it and go through that process because you might be surprised. And I would tell people, go ahead and Google your name because we did that. You had to do that in that, in that uh, presentation you did. And we sat there and we looked at it and we're like, oh, wow, that's really crazy. And I've done it dozens of times since your presentation, different people's names. And it, you know, wow, Samantha tells the truth. LinkedIn <laughs> pops up like all the time. So yeah. let, let's let's change gears from Google my business. Let's go to LinkedIn profiles and and how what I guess why why, why is that so important that when you show up there it, it it's the right look fit. What should be there? Yeah, I, I really think the dynamic of LinkedIn is changing. When it first rolled out, it was supposed to be like your digital resume um, to help you find a job and then like a professional business network. It still is to some degree, but it's an important place for business owners as well, because like I said, when you Google your name, it pops up first. So if some, if that's all somebody remembers about you, that's what's going to pop up. And when they get to your page, your work history is not really relevant, um, but what you can do for them is. Yes. So that's why there's like, I, I call it setting your LinkedIn up as a sales page because that's essentially what you want it to do. So there's like a few key things that you need to do um, on that page. And like one of the first ones is using the billboard space. So people don't, when they go to your LinkedIn profile, the first thing they see is like your little pic profile picture here. And then that huge banner at the top. And a lot of people will leave it blank or like throw in a kind of a throwaway image just to have something there um, with colors that they like. But you would never do that with a billboard. Like that's the first thing people see It's yeah. prime real estate, put an offer there. Um, it, yes. whatever your like free mag lead magnet is, put it there or your, whatever your book is. If you have a book, like, um, it, it should be there because what if they never scroll? That's right. That's so right. That, that's well, and, and, and so, so again, Google your business, but then Google your name, your LinkedIn profile and click on it, but maybe, maybe have somebody else click on it. And see what they think and, and have, have a good friend who would give you a good counsel back and be honest with you to go, yeah, that's not very good. And then maybe Google some other or link, go to other LinkedIn profiles that are really good and, and say, well, how can I make mine better? So a good picture doesn't have to be super professional all the time, right? Sometimes I tell clients that it's better just to have a, a more casual picture because I want to know who you are. If I'm going to do business with you, I've, I've got to trust you, right? No like and trust. And that's where it all starts. But giving people that quick billboard, I love that because I used to do radio advertising and billboards are a great reminder medium, very simple. One picture, six words, that's all you got. So make your billboard on LinkedIn, pretty simple. Make it an offer, give them an opportunity to take that next step, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I'd say, so if you're listening and you're like, I set up my LinkedIn eight years ago and I haven't looked at it since, I would recommend that you do that because um, when LinkedIn first was set up, all of the profiles were private. So if somebody Googled you, it would they would have to like log in to see any of your information. So if they clicked on your name, it would actually show up as just like, even if you have a photo, it would show up as like a blank little, you know, right. the little cutout image and not really give any information. So you might spend some time going through your profile and updating it and never flipping that little, like toggling that little um, switch. So nobody will see it. So make sure that you check it out. You see if what other people can see, um, update it, and then make sure it is public. Yeah. And, and, and let me put this out there because, you know, if my audience knows me and I'm not a huge social media guy, right? I'm, I'm on it, but I'm not active. And, and for, for many years, I was like, yeah, whatever, you know, LinkedIn, who cares, whatever, Facebook. But what I realized is my audience, my prospects, they're on it. They're looking at it. So it's important for me and for my company to at least have a great presence there, right? And then 
for us hiring people like you who, who do all that work, but whether or not you as the business owner like it or want to be on it, you need to be on it for your audience to attract those prospects because they are out there searching, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And you want to give yourself the best opportunity to be seen by them because like, so Google crawls LinkedIn. This is another way they're connected. Google will crawl LinkedIn. So when you're putting out regular content that has those keywords that people are searching for, you and key phrases, really, you have better opportunity of like showing up on that first page of Google, which is where everyone wants to be. That's where the hot leads are going. So you just really want to set yourself up for success. And this is kind of like a one, two punch LinkedIn and Google my business. Yeah. And, and we haven't even, we haven't noticed, we haven't touched on paid advertising or anything like that. Right. And, and that's all a possibility down the road, but it's almost like you need to, you, you don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? And I think a lot of people say, well, I've got to do paid advertising. I got to do this. Well, those are good and well, and they can work. But if you, you need to put the horse before the cart and, and what Samantha's hearing is, is you need those two horses pulling your cart, right? Google my business, your LinkedIn profile, making sure those are stunning, making sure those are set up properly because you've got all that organic traffic that's already there. Yeah, it's free. It's, it's free. free. <laughs> Wow, what a radical concept. <laughs> but so many times business owners, okay, so here's the deal. And this this is really what, what tipped Caleb and I is I looked at Caleb and he's like, brilliant. I'm like, Caleb, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can. Yes, he could do that. But was that the highest and best use of Caleb's time in our company? Absolutely not. He's yeah. got so many other things that, that he could do to generate revenue and help us. That's why we, we heard Samantha we saw what she was offering and we said, duh. And, and so we've hired her to help us get all this stuff set up. And it's really cool because I got an email the other day from like Google um, out of the blue saying, hey, look at how many people saw your profile the last month. I, I don't recall ever getting one of those. So you're, whatever you're doing is working. Um, but it's, it's a time versus money tug of war that we all, all fight with, right? Can a local business owner do this? Absolutely. In fact, you've got a, you've got a free resource uh, that we're going to offer that, that would probably help people understand how to do things like this. Absolutely, you can do it. Should a business owner do this? Probably not. Right. So talk to us a little bit about your services, how would you help a, a local business owner, an attorney, a financial advisor, a plumber, whatever, roofer, if, if they're sitting here going, wow, yeah, I, I, what, what, what would they do? They'd connect with you, but explain a little bit about your services and, and what you, you, how you've helped other clients. Yeah, sure. So, um, to be successful on social media, a lot of the gurus and other social media managers out there will say, hey, create your content, schedule it, set it, crock pot method, set it and forget it. But that's really like not the case with social media and social media platforms actually don't want you to do that at all. So when you play the game, you get better results. What the social media platforms want is for you to build relationships um, with those people that you're connecting with online. And which is like better for your business anyway, because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yep. So developing relationships on social media will help your profile grow. Um, but that means that you have to be engaging with them. You have to be commenting. You have to be reaching out and sending connection requests. And like, you know, somebody has a question. So you're like, hey, I actually have a, you know, a book on that. Uh, he, you know, here's a link to get a copy of it, something like that. And for a business owner, that can be really time consuming. We recommend doing an hour a day, five days a week, because that's what we've seen um, drive the most growth. So while you could set up your profile, you could create some content. Do you really want to be spending an hour of your day um, doing those connection requests? Or do you like LinkedIn because you can just pop in whenever you want? So we kind of take the pressure off of business owners so that they know that those things are still happening. Relationships are still being you know, fostered, but they don't have to spend their time that they should be doing other things in their business um, doing this create content we keep your profile looking spick and span um, we we do the engagement we create the connections those kind of things so that's primarily for linkedin for google my business 
we make sure that there's new fresh content going out regularly, um, that everything is updated with the most relevant information. Um, Google My Business also has a posting thing, a posting option. They have those posts, they go out a little bit less frequently. I think one a week is kind of, um, they have a lifespan of seven days. So we make sure that there's fresh content going out because that also helps your reach. As soon as some of my clients start having posts go out, the number of people that view their profiles will bump up to 300 people sometimes in the first week, just because the keywords that people are searching are in those posts. So we really help you just kind of maximize both of those platforms. Um, so whether they're looking up you or looking up your company, you're showing up. Yeah. And that's good. And, and the, you know, the key words there were, we do it for you. <laughs> you know, honestly, for, for small business, or is that done for you approach that we all really, really want. And too many times we, we struggle with making an investment like this because we just don't know if it's going to work or not. And at the same time, we struggle because we know we need to do it because everybody's talking about posting content. And at the same time, we struggle because I don't want to spend an hour a day posting content. I, this just doesn't drive me. I'm sorry. It drives, it, it, it drives Samantha and her team. They love to do it. They're experts at doing it. And it's content from your business. They, you know, they, they, they do a masterful job. So I'm obviously super excited about Samantha and Marketing Minimalist and what they can do because she's the first person I've really heard explain it in a way that makes sense. And yes, you can do it. Go get her done. But if you can't get it done in the next seven days, reach out to Samantha at marketingminimalist.com and start a conversation. You got a, you got a free resource that, that's on your website. What is that? Yeah, it's a strategy planner. So um, if you need to get your profile updated and you need to like brainstorm co content, because one of the things people, they're like, where do I even start with? Like, what do I write about? Um, we kind of help you get set up with that with the strategy planner. So yeah. that's front and center on the website. You can download it, um, join the email list. I'll, you know, I'll just send you some thoughts here and there. But yeah, or you can just go, you know, cut to the chase and just book a, book a call from her website to her because it's just really much better. Unless you've got a team uh, or some people or a techie that can uh, invest a few hours on a regular basis to make it happen because it, what she's talking about is, is no different than everything I talk about all day, every day. It's consistency, right? It's showing up on a regular basis. And social media is this big blob that's out there, right? And there's always a new thing, whether it's TikTok or whatever the next one's going to be. But it all boils down to principles of clarity, simplicity, and multiplication. Those are the three words that we keep coming back to. And, and what Samantha and her team allow you to do is, is really clarify your message and your presence online with Google My Business and LinkedIn profiles, primarily those two horses that are going to pull your cart, simplify your marketing and your messaging so you can gain those clients who are actually out there searching for you and your business. And, and when you gain those clients, you start multiplying your business. I mean, this is not rocket science, folks. Anyway. I'm obviously super excited, Samantha, and, and grateful to have you here. Any, any parting comments that you want to just encourage business owners to say, you know, get her done because so many people listen to something like this and they're excited, then they, they pull out. What, 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 what's the first thing besides calling you? What's the first thing somebody <laughs> should do um, on Google My Business or their LinkedIn profile? How would you say just? Yeah, I there's so many shiny pennies out there. There's so many people who want to take your money and, and tell you like, hey, you need to be spending $1,000 on ads. And really the fundamentals, you know, like the places where the people are already going, just it's free. So just take a few minutes and check out what the situation is. You know, it'll cost you five, five minutes to, to hop on Google and just search your business name to see what your Google My Business looks like and your LinkedIn. And then just make the decision. It's like, how do I want to show up online? How do I want to look to people who are looking for me? Um, and and do I want to do I want to spend money on ads or do I want to capitalize this on, on this first? So yeah. Well, and that's a great point because you invest money on ads, that money goes away and you have to invest it again the next month and the next month. You invest money here building your your, your Google, uh, my business and your LinkedIn profile, 
with Samantha and her team, they keep it up. It's going ongoingly, right? And you could invest some time or some money to get this up. It's kind of like creating a book. You create it once, it's there for many years. Very, you know, similar, but um, that's great. That's great content. Um, super counsel, Samantha Melhorn, marketingminimalist.com is the website. We'll have all that in the show notes, but uh, really encourage people to reach out to uh, Samantha, have a conversation with her and see how this would work for you and your business, because I'm really convinced she is able to, to help you put these things in place and, and help you reach more clients and um, grow your business. Samantha, thank you for uh, being here today. Thank you for having me. It was great to, to uh, share with, with your people all about LinkedIn and uh, Google My Business. Well, you are so welcome. We will be in touch very soon, I'm sure. And I hope other people reach out to uh, Samantha Melhorn, marketingminimalist.com. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Yeah.